Hello, and welcome back to SciTai Tech. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a magic potion bottle that contains pixie beans. Let's get started. And these are the items you're going to need to make for this project. The items you're going to need is a 4.5 volt battery pack, and this one I got from an LED strand, so it already has a slide switch and a 10 ohm resistor. You're also gonna need some pixie beans, which is plastic glowing rocks, a label, a UV LED light, which I took from a UV LED flashlight. You're also gonna need a glass spice jar that has a cork in it, which will make a perfect magic potion bottle to fit the pixie beans inside of. And you're also gonna need some hair, which is the hair that I took from a pixie, and you're going to need to modify the hair to put around this glass bottle. You're also going to need some cardboard. You're also going to need some birch bark, which will be attached to the cardboard of the housing. And now let's go ahead and assemble this project and let's get started. First, I'm going to take the label and write pixie beans on the label and write it in a fancy way. I ran out of room for beans, so I'm going to go and redo the label. There. That label looks a lot better. Next, I'm going to take a lighter and burn the edges of the label to give it an old, worn look to it. Just simply burn the edges and put out the flame right away. And then repeat the same process all the way around the label. Doing this will give it a nice old look to it. And there, that looks nice. Next, remove the label and place it onto the jar. And there we go, perfect. Next, I'm going to take some pixie beans or glow rocks and put them inside the jar. Put the cork on top, and there. Shake it up so it stays nice and even inside. And there, that already looks very nice. Next, I'm going to take the decapitated head from the pixie, which I fought a battle and I won. I took the head so that way I can use the hair to put onto the jar, and I also took her beans. Take a strand of hair so that way I can place it around the jar. Take a very nice straight strand, twist it a little bit, so it can be more like a rope texture. Cut it. And there, I have some pixie hair. And now take the decapitated pixie and save her for a future project. Next, I'm going to take some hot glue and glue some of the hair onto the jar. I'm going to do it on the back of the jar so that way you don't see the glue. Take a small amount of glue, place it right here and glue the hair into place. What I need to do is add a little bit more glue because hair is very difficult to glue. I now take the hair and wrap it around the jar. Add some more hot glue to glue the hair into place. And there we go, that looks nice. Next, what I need to do is remove some of the excess hair that's sticking out. Next, I'm going to take the hair and braid it so that way it stays together better and it will also look a little bit nicer. And there, she'll look just like this when complete. And what I've done on the end is I tied a knot and glued it into place so that way the braid stays in place. Next, I'm going to take a lighter and burn off some of the excess hair. And then brush it off. Huh, I did not realize this was synthetic hair. Real hair wouldn't do this, and it would be much easier to work with. Oh well, still works. So to fix the problem, I need to go and take some scissors and cut the hair. 
You wouldn't have to do this if you were using real hair. Synthetic hair likes to melt and solidify together. If you were to use real hair, it can crumble easier in a flame, and it turns into dust. And there, the project is almost complete. Next, I'm going to take some water and add some water to the jar. And if you want, you can also pretend that this is pixie tears. And as you can see, it's almost complete. However, I can just stop right here because I'm pretty satisfied with this result. But I want to add one more ingredient, and that is pixie bone dust or cornstarch. And what I want to do is take the pixie bone dust and add it to the pixie tears. Take a small pinch of pixie bone dust and place inside the pixie beans with the pixie tears. About three pinches is good. Put the cork back in and shake it up. And as you can see, the water is nice and murky, which is exactly what I want. This will cause the glue rocks to glow better and disperse evenly inside the liquid, so that way the whole jar can glow. And now let's go test it out and see how it looks in the dark. And as you can see, with the water being murky and the glue rocks glowing, it causes everything to glow more evenly. One more feature, if I didn't shake the jar, the liquid can go clear, which will give it another effect. If I shake it, it'll make it murky, which will give it a second effect. So it gives it a double effect. And now it's time to make the electronics part of the project. I have the battery pack and the LEDs, and I need to put everything together. Next, I'm going to take this piece of cardboard, and I'm going to take this angle ruler, and I want to measure out the corners, so that way I could be able to create the flaps to be able to create a box, which will then be the housing for the electronics. And now a different cardboard. I realized 4.5 centimeters was too big. See, these are too big, so I go for three centimeters instead because it will fit the battery pack. And as you can see, that little flap will not fit, but the flap here will fit. It will be very tight, but it will still fit. Next, I want to take the UV LEDs and place them in the center of the box. And to find the center, I'm going to need to create an X. Make a line from each corner to corner, which will then create a big X. And as you can see, X marks a spot, which right here is my center. Next, I'm going to take a measurement and measure the diameter of these LEDs. Next, I'm going to take a compass and measure a radius of 2.5 centimeters, which will make a full 5 centimeter circle. And now create a 5 centimeter circle. There we go, perfect. Next, I'm going to cut out the squares, and there, she'll look just like this. Next, I'm going to go and cut out the circle with using a Zacto knife. And there, my circle is now cut out, which now can fit the LEDs in place. As you can see, it's a perfect fit. Next, I'm going to bend the flaps of the housing by taking a ruler and place it on the cardboard, so that way I can have a perfect fold. And there, she'll look just like this. Repeat the same process three more times. Next, I'm going to take some hot glue and glue all the flaps together by putting some hot glue on each corner. Hold the corner together, and it should glue into place just like that. And repeat the same process three more times. And there, the housing is now complete. Next, I'm going to take the neodymium magnets, separate them in twos, put a little bit of hot glue on the side panel, and then take the neodymium magnet and place it on the glue. Make sure the first magnet is level with the rim of the housing. Add a little bit more hot glue to glue it into place better. And now repeat the same process three more times. And there, she'll look just like this. Next, take a little bit of hot glue and place it on the second magnet. Now 
Next, I'm going to take the bottom part of the housing, place it on top of the magnets, press it down gently, wait for the glue to solidify, and now I can be able to remove it just like this, except one magnet didn't come off. But that's okay, I can always re-glue it. And now I can be able to open it and close it. Leaving a little gap is okay because that makes it easier to open up. Next, open it up. Place the 4.5 volt battery pack. And yes, this is a different battery pack because the previous one actually didn't work. Take a little bit of hot glue and place it onto this lid. Glue the batteries in place. Next, I'm going to remove the spring that is attached to the LEDs. And now make a quick test to see if the LEDs work. And there, it works. And I also know which is anode and which is cathode. I'm going to take this negative wire and solder it to the cathode of the LEDs. Next, take a 10 ohm resistor and solder it to the anode of the LEDs. Next, I'm going to take the screwdriver and make a hole that's in the center of this round piece that I cut out from the first part of the cardboard. Not putting it perfectly centered because that's where the resistor is going to go. And looking at the resistor, it's not perfectly centered either. So I have to make it match. Next, I'm going to take some hot glue and put it all over the PCB of the circuit. And now, take this piece of cardboard and place it on top of the hot glue. This will keep everything insulated. And now make a quick test. And as you can see, it still works. Next, take some string tubing and place it over the positive wire. And now solder it to the 10 ohm resistor. And now take the string tube and cover the exposed wire. There we go. Take a lighter and shrink the tube. There, everything is now insulated. Next, I'm going to take the positive wire, put it in this position, and then cut it. Remove the insulation. Solder tin it. And now solder the positive wires to the slide switch. The circuit is now complete. Let's go test it out. And there, as you can see, it works. Next, take some hot glue and put it next to the battery pack and glue in the slide switch. Put a little bit more glue to insulate it and to keep it in place. And there, as you can see, it still works. Next, I'm gonna take the LEDs and place inside the housing. And now close up the housing as well. And then take some hot glue and glue the LEDs into place. And there, the project is almost complete. Next, what I need to do is take this birch bark and place it around the cardboard so that way it gives it a more natural look. Take some scissors and make sure I cut out perfectly straight panels. There we go, just like that. Take a measurement. Make sure that it covers perfectly and take a marker and mark the sides. Next, take some scissors and cut off a piece of bark so that way I can glue it into place. And there we go, the first panel. Repeat the same process to make a second panel. Next, take a generous amount of hot glue and place it onto the housing. Make sure you don't glue it onto the lid, otherwise it'll be stuck. Take the birch bark, cover the surface. Press it down. And there, that already looks nice. Now repeat the same process three more times. And there, it should look just like this. Pay close attention to detail because there may be some excess that you need to cut off. Next, I need to put some more birch bark on the top of the housing. 
place it on top of the bark, trace around it, and then cut out a square. Next, I'm going to go and make an X to find the center. I have right here a second circle that I cut out. Take a screwdriver and make a pinhole so that way I can look through the hole and find the X. Make the hole a little bit bigger so it's easier to see through it. And as you can see, the center of the hole will have the center of the X. And there, X marks a spot. So locate it carefully and then trace around the circle. Next, take a Zacto knife and cut out the birch bark, but be very careful because birch bark is very brittle and delicate. So gently make a cut. And there, I have made my circle. And I'll place it on the top of the housing. Make sure it looks very nice on top. There, that position looks nice. And then take some hot glue and place it on the surface of the housing. Put a generous amount so it glues into place perfectly. And I'll take the birch bark that goes on top and cover it. Cut off the excess. And there, the housing is now complete. Now, take the pixie beans and place it on top. And there, the project is now complete. Let's go ahead and turn on the LEDs and test it out and see how this looks. Open up the housing, carefully. Turn on the switch. And there, you can take the jar and place it on top. And now using the UV LEDs, it allows the glow rocks to glow bright. Of course, if you wanted to, you can pretend that UV light is the pixie soul. And there, the project is now complete. And when you lift up the pixie beans, you can see that the beans are glowing. Glowing in from the first option. Now if I shake it, it will show the second option, which also looks very nice. So if you were to eat some pixie beans, you have to make sure you always shake it first. And now let's see how this looks in the complete darkness. And as you can see, this looks great. You can open up the lid. Pull out a pixie bean, and you can see it glow. So basically, if you want to pretend, pixie beans are magical beans that comes from pixies, using pixie tears as the liquid, using pixie bones as the bone dust inside the liquid, and using pixie hair as the hair that is from the pixie. And of course, using the light is actually the pixie soul. And this is just a very fun and interesting idea for a project. And there you have it. Now you know how to make your very own magic potion bottle pixie beans. Thank you for watching SciTech. Tech. I hope you learned something new. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and of course click on the bell icon to be notified of future SciTech videos. Till the next tech, goodbye.